Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm excited to bring you seven more spring and Easter DIYs. With all that being said, let's get crafting. For today's first project, I'm going to be making a bunny and carrot sign using two of these wood plank signs. I believe were originally from Hobby Lobby. This set of two color your own bunnies and some of the jute twine carrots from Dollar Tree as well. So these are a nice medium size. And so what I'm gonna do, you get two in the package, is I'm going to Mod Podge this black and white gingham scrapbook paper on each of the bunnies. Now you can see on this one, I'm putting the Mod Podge on the back side of the bunny. I'm gonna spritz my paper a little bit and Mod Podge this on the back. This is so that my bunnies can be facing each other. So once we get that smoothed out, we'll go ahead and put the Mod Podge and the scrap of paper on the front side of our other bunny and let those dry completely. Then once they are dry, I'm taking my Fiskars fingertip knife on my cutting mat there and just cutting away the scrapbook paper, getting as close as I can to the wood shape. And then we'll clean it up with our little finger sander here just to get any of those pieces off of the edge. And we'll do this to both of our bunnies. Like I said, these two wood plank signs, I believe were from Hobby Lobby. I did sand the front because someone had um, done some lettering on them. And then after removing the jute twine hangers, I'm going to flip them over to the back and using four pieces of one gallon paint stick, I'm going to hot glue those across the back to take my two square signs and turn it into one larger rectangular uh, shiplap wood plank looking sign. This is going to be a nice neutral backdrop for our two gingham bunnies and three of the jute twine carrots in the middle. Now I opted to not put any words on my sign, but of course you could put some of the Easter galvanized words from Dollar Tree. You could stencil some words on there, um, but I just decided to have the three carrots and the two bunnies. Once I get everything hot glued on, our sign will be almost done. I am going to take some black and white gingham ribbon and tie a simple bow that I'm going to use to dress up our carrots just by hot gluing it to our center carrot and then trimming the ends a little bit. We're just gonna glue it right there. And then we're also going to make some simple burlap bows for our bunnies. Not burlap bows, we're gonna make jute twine bows. So we're gonna wrap this around our fingers a few times and then trim it, cut a smaller piece that we're then going to tie in a knot at the center. And this is going to give us a little jute twine bow to go where the neck would be of our bunny. So once we get that trimmed up, we'll make a second one and then glue these to our bunnies. And our final finishing touch will be to glue some buttons there that I got from Walmart. These were a black and white set. I'm gonna glue um, a slightly larger white one and then glue a smaller black one to the center. And that's it for this first DIY. I love the simplicity of it, but also adding the little details with the bows and the buttons. What do you guys think?
If you are new to my channel today, stopping by for the first time, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Also, be sure to hit the bell and choose the notifications. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back. I so appreciate your support of my channel. DIY number two is going to be a more religious Easter project, making these Jesus stones and this cross. I'm using five of the foam dice, some poster sticker letters, and one of these chunky wood crosses from Dollar Tree. The first thing I'm going to do is take my Waverly chalk paint in white, and I'm going to give my foam dice two coats. You can see I paint the top and about halfway down on the sides. I let those dry, and then I'll do the bottom and the rest of the sides, and I'm gonna do that two times. That's just my method for getting a nice even coat to cover up the color of the foam dice and also not be able to see the white dots anymore. Now for my chunky cross, I'm going to remove the jute hanger and then I chose to use my dark gray, which is called elephant in my Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to do the front, the back, and all the sides of this chunky wood cross. While that's drying, we'll come back to our dice and using my poster sticker letters, I'm going to do one letter on each dice or what will be stones and we're going to spell out Jesus using our poster sticker letters. Next, we'll apply a layer of our matte finish Mod Podge to the front to make sure that our sticker letters stay put and don't peel off. Now that our Mod Podge is dry, I'm gonna take that same elephant chalk paint and more of a chip brush, and I'm going to roughen up these perfectly white cubes and make them look more like stones. So we'll do this dark gray kind of on all of the edges and then dry brushing on each of the surfaces as well, and we'll do this to all five of our dice. Then coming back to our wood cross, now I'm taking the lighter gray called Mineral, uh, same chippy brush and just dry brushing some of that lighter gray. We just want our cross, like our stones, to look old and worn. So you can see my method here, I dry brush some of the mineral gray, then I'm going to take my little sander and kind of blend it in, and then I do that process as many times as I want until I get the look that I'm going for. I'm going to then take that mineral and apply this lighter gray also in dry brushing to my stones until I have achieved the look that I want. I wanna add just a couple more details to my cross. First, taking some of this jute twine, attaching it to the back with a little dot of hot glue. I'm going to wrap this uh, about four or five times, um, covering up the hole and also to kind of symbolize um, the crown of thorns that Jesus wore when he was on the cross. And then we just snip it and hot glue the other end down so that will stay in place. Lastly, I wanted to take a small wooden heart, and once I get it darkened up with some antique wax, we're gonna glue that right on the center of our cross to be our finishing touch. And I really love how this turned out. I did not glue my blocks together. I just have them sitting next to each other and the cross just sitting on top.
DIY number three is another one that's going to have a cross theme to it. Taking one of these pennant signs, a four by six frame from Dollar Tree and some burlap ribbon. This isn't from Dollar Tree, but they do have it at Dollar Tree. Um, this step is optional. I like to take the extra time just to peel off this paper just so it doesn't show through, but it is a little bit, it does take a little bit of time. Then using this really pretty spring crisp, uh, <laughs> scrap of paper that I have, I'm going to take my Mod Podge and put a pretty generous layer over the front of my pennant sign. And then I'm going to lay this down, smooth it out. I did not spray it because it is a little bit of a thicker scrapbook paper and it laid just fine without bubbles just by smoothing it out and then right away I'm going to put another layer of Mod Podge over the top and then we'll set that aside to let it dry. While our Mod Podge on our pennant sign is drying, I'm going to then take the little picture frame. I liked this one because it had kind of a wood grain look to it. However, it is plastic. We're going to remove the backing and the paper and the glass. We don't need any of those. And then taking my white chalk paint and a chippy brush, I'm gonna dry brush some white over this because it was kind of a grayish color and um, we're just gonna lighten it up a little bit with that white chalk paint and then set that aside to dry as well. You could do a layer of Mod Podge over it if you want to make sure the paint doesn't scratch off. Now that my scrapbook paper is dry, I'm taking my same Fiskars fingertip knife and trimming around to get that extra scrapbook paper off the edges right onto the edge there of our pennant sign to give a nice crisp edge. Now we're going to take our frame and our burlap ribbon. Here you can see I'm measuring how long of a piece I need to go the longer um, direction of our frame. And once I trim that off, we're just going to hot glue it to the back of our plastic frame. This take does take a little bit of patience. You wanna make sure you press it down enough and wait long enough until it is completely attached to the frame before you pull the ribbon and attach the other side. So we are going to make our cross out of this burlap ribbon. So here's our height of our cross and then we will cut this smaller piece to go across and be the horizontal piece. Again, we place down some hot glue, fold that over and press down on it with our little mini spatula here until we are sure that it is in place securely. I did keep this horizontal piece a little bit looser. We're going to be tying some jute twine um, on each of the pieces of burlap to bring our cross together. So here I have a small piece of jute twine just going under the front horizontal piece of our cross and we're going to tie a double knot cinching our burlap ribbon together there in the center as close to the middle as you can get double knot it and then we will trim off the excess of the twine then we're going to flip our frame over and we're going to do the same thing on our vertical piece of our cross just tying that double knot, cinching our burlap ribbon together, and then once we trim it, you'll see when we flip it over that our cross is made out of our burlap ribbon. To give a finishing touch to our cross and to cover up our jute twine knots, I'm taking another one of these small wood hearts I had in my stash and just hot gluing that right there to the center of our cross. Now that that is done, we can put a ton of hot glue on the back of our picture frame and I reinforce extra where the burlap ribbon is and then we will glue this down to the front center of our pennant sign and our project will be complete.
I absolutely love the look of this project using just a few items from Dollar Tree. You could definitely modify this, changing up the scrap of paper, the frame, and even the ribbon to match the colors of your choice. If you enjoy what you see here on my Monarch Mom DIY YouTube channel, please be sure to head over to Facebook and like my Monarch Mom DIY page there. That is where I will be doing updates on Magnolia Design Company stencil new releases, restocks, and just general announcements about Magnolia. DIY number four is super simple and cute. It's a wood heart made into a carrot. So using one of these chunky wood hearts this time and a little bit of greenery from Dollar Tree, we're going to remove the jute twine and I'm going to give this heart a coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. Front, back, and the sides and then we're going to set that aside to let it dry. Now at this point, once it's dry, you can choose to do dots like I'm going to. You could do stripes. You could do really tiny dots just to add some fun uh, design to this carrot. I'm taking one of these small foam uh, dome brushes or circle makers, I don't know what you call it, and I'm covering the end with white paint and then slightly twisting as I press down to make these nice perfectly round polka dots. So you can do these all over your heart-shaped carrot and this is what I ended up with. We let that dry and then taking just a few pieces of, I don't even know what this is called. It was some sort of greenery that was at Dollar Tree. I'm taking the three pieces and right at the bottom, I'm tying them together with a piece of jute twine and then we will trim the ends. We're gonna then put some hot glue covering up the hole where the string was hanging and press that down. This will be the greenery part of our little wood carrot. And then I'm gonna make a small, simple twine bow like you saw me do earlier. And we're going to tie that in the center and glue that right over uh, the ends of our greenery just to clean it up and kind of hide where we glued those on. And then we'll add one more finishing touch before we're done. And here's our super cute wood heart carrot. I can't wait to find more of these chunky hearts at Dollar Tree so I can make some more of these carrots with different patterns of the white paint on top. Our next project, DIY number five, is going to be a thankful, grateful, blessed cross. So I'm using this large cutting board from a thrift store, a couple pieces of five gallon paint stick, and then you can use a stencil for this or I'm going to use the window cling sticker from Dollar Tree. Now I did sand off, um, sometimes when you find cutting boards at thrift stores, they're a little grimy. So I did sand it and then now I'm doing a coat of antique wax on the front and the back and on the edges just to get a nice clean surface to work with. You could leave it natural, you could paint your cutting board a different color if you'd like. Now taking some of my white chalk paint and a chippy brush, kind of like I did with my small wood chunky cross, I'm adding some dimension to my cutting board. This is of course completely optional. Adding some of the white paint, then kind of sanding it down to blend it in. Again, just what I decided to try on this project to lighten up my wood a little bit more. Thank you. 
Next, taking my two pieces of five gallon paint stick, I am going to do the antique wax on these as well. And then we will just leave them that color. So just brushing it on and then we'll wipe away the excess. I did the front and the sides, but I did not worry about doing the back since you will not see it. So this is kind of what I'm thinking to lay the cross so that the top of it covers the hole in the cutting board. And then I'm going to use these words from this window sticker or wall sticker from Dollar Tree. So I have blessed at the bottom. Then I'm gonna place thankful at the top, right next to my cross or right under my cross there. And then we'll put grateful kind of centered between those two. It is important you want to have your cross in place where you're gonna to wanna to glue it to make sure that um, you're not gonna cover up any of your words once you do glue that down. So then once I have my three words in place, like I did on the Jesus stones, I'm gonna go ahead then and do a light layer of the matte finish Mod Podge over the words, but then also over the entire surface of our cutting board and let that dry so that we have a nice uniform um, finish on our entire project. And now that that's dry, we'll take some hot glue and glue the two pieces of our cross together. And then I'm gonna make sure that I have that as centered as possible, just lining it up on my grid mat there. Then I'm gonna attach a piece of jute twine to the back and just wrapping it about five or six times, I'm gonna go crisscross um, both ways, just because, you know, that's what I've seen um, biblically, that that's how they attached the two pieces of the cross together is they tied them with rope. And I just love using jute twine to add texture and dimension to my projects. Once you have that, how much you want, just snip it and hot glue the other end to the back of your cross. And then we will glue our cross to our cutting board to finish off our project. Be sure to check the description box below the video title. You might have to hit the little down arrow next to the title. That is where you will find links for Facebook, Magnolia Design Company, my Amazon storefront for frequently used tools and supplies, and also a list of all the supplies I use in each of these DIYs. I know some of you out there really like the paper project. So for DIY number six, we're going to do a stenciled prayer journal using some scrapbook paper, a magnolia stencil, some of this fold over elastic and a composition notebook and pen from Walmart. So this is some of the same paper I used on the uh, burlap pennant sign with the cross and I'm just picking out four pieces. The great thing about using these paper pads from Michaels or wherever is they all coordinate. So here I am marking where I'm going to need to trim my cover page in order to get it to fit and then my inside scrapbook paper I'm going to just tuck in there and I'm going to trace around the front cover and then we'll cut that out. And then we'll do the same thing for the scrap of paper that we're going to use to cover the inside of the back cover. So I'm gonna tuck that green one. And then our inside back cover, I'm gonna use this blue one. Like I said, just do the same thing. You just trace around it and then cut that out. We are going to Mod Podge on the front cover and back cover. We want our um, project to be a little water resistant if you're out and about. And we are gonna use that same flower paper for the back. But remember I made that little pencil mark on this front cover. I really liked that 
little pink flowers with leaves. I wanted that on the top right corner of my front and I am not going to cover up the black binding. In order to Mod Podge this on, I just tucked a piece of white cardstock inside so that I don't end up gluing my pages together. Put a layer of Mod Podge on the front and then line up that scrap of paper right against that black edging. Smooth that out and we're going to let that dry before we trim off the excess paper. Now that it is dry, again, I think I've used this thing in every video, we're gonna trim that extra scrap of paper to get a nice clean edge on this front cover of our little prayer journal. You can use this idea for any type of notebook. Um, I don't know, I just think around this Easter theme that a prayer journal is a nice idea. These would even make great um, craft show sellers and maybe even gifts. So I had a couple options there for my stencil. I decided to use this one, it says work hard, pray harder. I'm just going to use the word pray down here on the bottom left corner of my journal. I did, I will say, um, do a spray of matte clear spray on this to have a nice um, surface to stencil on. Using some of my black chalk paste, we're just working hard to only get the word pray. So if it's close to other letters and words, you might just have to go a little bit more carefully. Peel and reveal, here's our nice word pray there on the bottom of our stencil. Now, I, instead of Mod Podge and instead of glue stick, I'm gonna use here what I have from when I used to make a lot of scrapbooks. Um, this is called score tape. This stuff's awesome. It's like double stick tape, but it's really strong. So I'm going around the edges and then I'm also gonna put some in the center. You'll want to burnish it, which just means, you know, press it down really well so it's adhered to the paper. And then you'll peel off the backing of all the little pieces. And once you have all those off, we'll be able to line it up on the inside of our front cover of our journal and get that all nice and lined up on the corners and the edges and smooth it out really well. If you did have some overhang, you can again pull out your little Fisker's knife and trim those up to be nice and clean. We're gonna do the same thing with the blue piece of scrapbook paper that's gonna go on the inside of the back cover. Again, we're gonna use that score tape to go all around and then attach that on the inside. Another fun thing you can do if you're making these for a craft show or for gifts is with these pens that you have the clear barrel there, um, you can take a piece of scrapbook paper that's one inch by about three and a quarter inches and you can roll this up really tight, kind of like you're making a straw with your scrapbook paper. Either use a bone folder there or I just kind of use my fingernails to crease it roll it up really tight and then taking out the end and the the uh, ink part you can get that pushed in there and it just adds a little decorative touch to your pen to make kind of a matching set with your journal so i went ahead and did that to coordinate with my journal and now we're going to take some of this fold over elastic. We are going to make a closure for our journal. So that's why we haven't done our back cover yet is we're going to hide it under our back scrapbook paper. So I'm putting some hot glue. I'm gonna run that um, elastic all along the back side of our journal excuse my head there, and make sure that's nice and tight. We are gonna pull it a little tight in order to attach it all the way um, there at the top of the back. So pulling it kind of tight and attaching some more hot glue, we're going to lay that elastic down 
and then trim off the excess there. So you can see we're going to make like in a little elastic uh, closure to keep our journal nice and closed. And then now that we have that in place and it's hot glued all along that back cover, now we can Mod Podge our back scrapbook paper on. So we're going to do the same thing we did on the front, put a layer of Mod Podge. This time though, we're also going to be going over that elastic. So put your protective paper inside the back cover there. Uh, lay down your Mod Podge, go a little heavy over the elastic because we really want that to stay nice and attached to make this a really sturdy journal. I don't know why, but I did go ahead and spray this back paper. Whatever, I don't think it hurt anything. Maybe I wanted it to attach really well over the bump of the elastic. So lay that down, smooth it out, and then we're going to let that dry completely before we trim it up just like this with our Fiskars trimmer, again, going around the outside. I love this project because you can modify it with any type of scrapbook paper. I love this fold over elastic. I get mine from Amazon in a ton of different colors. Um, and these would make really great, like a journal for your kids if they're going on a trip or um, whatnot. I did do one last layer of Mod Podge over our back cover because like I said, if you set your coffee down on top of this, you don't want it to get ruined or anything like that. So here's our completed journal with the strap. And I wanted to add one other little finishing touch. We're gonna make a little pen loop with just a little more of this elastic. I'm gonna hot glue a piece here to the back of my strap. We're going to loop it around our pen and then hot glue it again to the back just to make a little loop, like I said, for a pen. Nice little matching set and you can keep everything all together. For DIY number seven, I'm gonna show you a really simple way to make a tiered tray using a cake pan and a metal um, flower uh, bucket from Dollar Tree. We're also going to use a wood tag and a stencil. So here we're gonna start with our cake pan and our metal um, vase there. And I'm going to give these a couple coats of plaster chalk paint. Um, I just wanted to make something neutral that I could use for pretty much all year long. Again, you make this whatever color you want for your decor. Maybe you want to just leave it the galvanized metal. You could do that too. But like I said, I'm going to cover mine with plaster. Then taking this little wood tag, I believe this is from Hobby Lobby in the party section. Because my tiered tray is going to be that off-white, I decided to paint my tag with my black chalk paint and we'll just let that dry. Now using this stencil from Magnolia that says home, I'm going to just stencil this onto our black tag using some of my white chalk paste. This is just another idea to show you how versatile the stencils are, that you can use them in lots of different ways. So once we fuzzed our stencil, we'll lay that down flat on our tag and using just the tiniest little bit of the white chalk paste, lay that down in the mesh stencil, scrape away any excess with your squeegee, and then peel and reveal a perfectly stenciled word to add 
just another little touch to our project. We're gonna let that dry. And I also, again, an optional step, decided to kind of make my tiered tray look kind of old. So I'm using antique wax and I'm going to brush it on, wipe it. I get my paper towel wet and I just am making this look really old and uh, like it's been around for a while, a little rusty. I'm gonna do the same thing to the cake pan and then once I have both of my pieces how I want, we will glue them together. I did also add a little edging to my tag here just to give it a little more character, just going really kind of roughly around with my white chalk paint again and a really tiny brush. I just loved how that added a little bit extra to that tag. Now I'm going to use E6000 because these are both metal pieces. Just you can see I'm putting some dots of it around the bottom of my little flower bucket there and then we will glue that down to the bottom of our cake pan this is a really simple tiered stand and then i decided to add some things to make this decorated for easter i had some of these styrofoam eggs in my stash so i decided to paint two of them with pool blue two with ballet slipper and then i found this lemon squeeze martha stewart paint at my dollar tree i did uh, mute it down with some white and let those dry I also had from last year one of these carrot jump ropes and I wanted to make these a little more neutral into carrots so I painted them also with plaster and then to make the greenery I took some of the green burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree cut a couple pieces scrunched it together there on the end and then I'm going to cut little strips not all the way off just down to um, about there where it's cinching together and this is going to make the top part of my carrots this is just an idea that came to me i'm like what do i have that's green and i really love how this turned out for these little jump rope carrots just stuck the uh, pieces there in the hole and just using some hot glue glued those in to be the tops of my carrots. To add my tag to my tiered tray, I took the black and white gingham ribbon, cut myself a piece there and looped it through the tag. I did um, tie a knot and then I'm gonna just tie it around um, the base of the cake pan there. I did use a little couple dots of hot glue so that it wouldn't um, shift around, but tie that knot, put some hot glue under it, and then I'm also going to put a little dot of hot glue under one side of my tag just so it kind of um, lays at an angle there. So once you have your stand made, you can decorate it however you'd like. So for Easter, I'm gonna put some moss in here. I have some of this uh, pastel beaded garland from Dollar Tree. I have this super cute stuffed bunny that I made in my live on Thursday night. If you missed that, go look for that um, video. It was really fun. And then adding in my jump rope carrots. I also have one of those little white ceramic bunnies that was in like a, a kit, a craft kit. And then I'm just placing in my pastel colored styrofoam eggs that I painted. And here's a easy little tiered stand decorated for Easter and spring. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please comment and let me know which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.